Just on this extraordinary thing we call dialogue. Um, it's just a modish word, perhaps overused, but there's something real going on that has never happened before. It can be the last refuge of scoundrels. <laughs> dialogue. When all else has failed, let's dialogue, uh, which means <laughs> nothing's really going to happen. However, there's a, a deeper sense, I think, where uh, what's going to happen has never happened before. That the first time people are consciously meeting and they're not putting in reserve, holding in suspension what they believe, but first time um, meeting the other, be it friend or fellow traveller or enemy or, or say adversary, and uh, there's a sharing of uh, consciousness in a way that is now, it's an event, uh, the outcome of which is not yet uh, decided. Sometimes when we hear a dear uh, uh, indigenous brothers and sisters speaking as though, oh, Alka, we're in trouble, we're, you know, we're, we're struggling on. We're all in that situation at the moment. Every culture in the world. Uh, most of all, where we're living at the moment, even great Europe that we... It's all, something's happening. And do we see this as a movement toward greater life or uh, something rather more desperate? Our tendency is to say, oh, well, we hear of our Aboriginal people, Indigenous people, uh, how they're losing their culture and uh, their roots. And uh, they're actually, they're not so much casualties, but pioneers of what's happening on a more cosmic or global scene. That everyone is going through the same, uh, uh, same critical period where... Uh, uh, where it may be easy to project on to the, uh, the West, as we say, where, wherever the West is now, uh, as though they've, we've got all the answers, we've certainly got all the words, and perhaps all the resources. But anyone who's reasonably alert in the West um, is, uh, is also alert to the fact that we uh, we're tend to live in amnesia for a start, no sense of history. We tend to, uh, we're not adjusting to the world of technology, of internet, and, uh, mediascape, as our friend Paolo called it, uh, where everyone's, uh, something else is doing the imagining um, and thinking for us. And on top of that, we're subject to incredible um, existential depression <laughs> when, for example, the, uh, the utter idiocy of the global financial crisis. I mean, here, the, pe the people we thought knew everything, the practical people, the real, the masters of the universe, were revealed as, as fools. There is no question, no denying the discomfort occasioned by the collapse of old boundaries behind which human or even Christian cultural <coughs> identities functioned in their own respective forms of self-containment. For everyone now, everyone, not only our indigenous peoples, but everyone, something is breaking down. Is it a breakdown or the prelude to a breakthrough? It's almost as though we're balanced on that point. Uh, gloom and depression, um, or when we see all our former idols collapse, uh, do we awaken to uh, what we can only call the one true God? That uh, break down, well, the idols collapse, the demons have driven us to a form of cultural madness, and it's a time to reinvigorate the great, um, uh, the living water of our tradition and reintegrate that into a much more... Uh, um, I think Catholic, putting the holic back into the Catholic, uh, openness to the other, to not to get beyond. Uh, even the word religion is it's not, uh, <laughs> or let alone Catholicism, is an invention of you know, early 19th century. But to have that uh, uh, true universality of, uh, of outlook, uh, centred, not, not just something we... Uh, 
breakthrough ourselves, but uh, it's allowing the breakthrough of the original gospel or revelation. The crisis of particular historical forms of culture is the pain of rebirth into another realm of communication, more religiously radical and open compared to anything experienced in the past. The hand that hurts, as the prophet says, is the hand that heals. Re religions, if you call it, well, I don't like the word religion, it's life, reality. Uh, it has to be renewed every day. And not because someone decides to be to upgrade their religious performance, but to let the uh, the light that has been received, uh, you know, penetrate the darkness or the uh, the word, you know, enter into the the proper uh, the stillness and receptivity of our lives. And as I say, uh, I just chose as amongst the many themes the fact that the crucified one is risen not to disappear from the world, but to be present to us. There's a resurrection of the life in, at precisely at the most desperate times. And I, uh, I feel perhaps the, the, uh, in the midst of the pessimism or depression or confusion of the time that this is the time to recover you know, the deepest meaning of faith and hope. One of the great signs of hope today is the many levels of interfaith dialogue taking place. Those who speak for the deeper places of the heart and the higher reaches of the spirit are playing a part in the emergence of a global human culture. The more you understand the real life of others, of the other, the ever mysterious other, the non-expendable other, the more you can um, speak truly. I mean, face them in honesty and hope, and uh, dare we say, even love, in, in, um, and uh, communicate in, a, in an authentic fashion. So it's true we can uh, we can employ the great loops, you know, of, of the religions of Hinduism, but basically, it's you and me, and maybe us to some degree. And of course, with prayer, you can go beyond that, but uh, it's allowing the other to step out of the anonymity of great generalizations and to say, well, look, I don't know what you believe or what hope, but I'm hoping in the, at the peril of my soul, you might say, that, that you are destined for eternal life. Uh, and that, that's the assurance that I have, that even if I don't like you, even if you've been a rat, uh, or, or I have, that there is an infinite mercy that can embrace us.